Hey everyone, some time ago on the channel I did an experiment where I mounted a CPU cooler onto a graphics card and the effect on the performance was huge because it not only kept the temperatures very low but it was also very very quiet and this is because the heatsink setup was more effective at removing the heat. Now I built this into a custom computer called the Cloud Unit which was geared for silence and it's still being used to this day. But obviously that was four years ago now and computer technology has moved on a lot since then and uh, it's definitely shifted more towards cool and quiet with higher efficiencies. So is this kind of hardware modding even worth doing anymore? Well, that's what I'm going to be finding out by mounting a Noctua cooler. This is a dual tower cooler, so even more effective at removing heat than the last cooler I used. And I'm going to be mounting it onto a NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti, which is one of the most power-hungry cards of recent years, with a TDP of 250 watts, which is about 100 watts more than the previous card I tried this on. And that's a lot of power. So, if this can keep this cool and quiet, then yes, it's worth doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some base noise levels and temperatures with the card with its stock cooler. And I've got my test rig set up over here. It's just a mini ITX motherboard on top of a passive power supply. It's a little bit hodgepodge, but it's just a quick way of having an open style test bench. So now that the graphics card is in place, I'm just going to launch a few benchmarks and see what kind of temperatures we get and also what the fan speeds are. Now, as later I'm going to be dealing with very low levels of noise, I'm going to use for the sound tests my homemade microphone rig, which has two studio microphones inside that have a very low self noise. So it means that we can hear the fans without any interference from the microphone itself. So as you can see, I've got the benchmark running here, and during the benchmark, the temperature of the card gets to about 75 degrees, which is what you can expect when playing games as well. Now sound-wise, it's not obnoxiously loud, but it is very audible. Uh, here's a sound sample of it. And for comparison's sake, so you can see what's attributable to the microphone, here is just the room tone with no computer on at all. Okay, so those results were fairly predictable and were as expected, so it's time to mount the cooler onto the card. And the first thing to do with that is remove this card's own stock cooler. So I'm just going to get my screwdriver and undo the screws around here. Now this actually looks like a really nice heatsink. There's some beefy heat pipes here and uh, these conduct the heat to the aluminium fins. And the graphics card itself looks very thin now that the heatsink has been removed from it. And uh, it's got these really nice heat spreaders on it as well. Now the heatsink has to cool the chip in the middle here, which is the die, and this is where most of the heat from the graphics card comes from. So to mount it, I'm going to use a CNC router to cut out a little bracket, which can then be clipped to the heatsink and then after adding some heat paste to the die, the two can be clamped together. And this actually works really well. Now another area that needs cooling on the card is the power delivery section, which is at the back here. So I'm going to stick some small bits of aluminium to these, which I'm holding together with some thermally conductive glue. This levels them off with the surrounding heat spreader, allowing me to mount some heat sinks directly on top to keep this area cool. So the last thing to do now is mount the fans in place. And once this is done, it looks pretty ridiculous um, in a good way as a hardware enthusiast. Now with that done, I think it's ready to try out. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Now that is a sight. Right, so I've done my tests and I'm happy to report 
that it works really well. Okay, so the benchmark's running at the moment, and the card is at 62 degrees Celsius, so it's significantly cooler than it was before. But here's the best bit. It is now making hardly any noise at all because um, these fans are running at their slowest speed. And to do that, I'm using a little fan controller down here. So the best fan configuration I've found is actually to take out the middle fan and have the two fans on the outside face each other so that they both blow cool air in towards the central gap of the two towers. This means that each tower receives fresh cool air and as the fans are spinning at such a low RPM, the airflow is very low, which means that when the air meets in the middle, it simply disperses without a problem. This resulted in a graphics card temperature of 62 degrees Celsius, which is a huge 13 Celsius drop compared to the stock cooler. Adding back the middle fan and setting them all to blow in the same direction at a high RPM allowed the temperatures to plummet even further to as low as, wait for it, 53 degrees Celsius, which is an unbelievable 22 degree drop compared to stock, at the cost of being noisier. Uh, speaking of noise actually, here are the sound samples of the various configurations. Make sure that you listen to this in a quiet environment or use headphones so that you can compare properly. So to my ears, the big cooler absolutely blows the stock one out of the water when it comes to noise levels, but it does make very apparent the coil whine of the card as the fan noise isn't masking it anymore. Now, coil whine results from the power delivery circuitry of the card and is affected by what the graphics card is rendering at any given moment. It may be possible to reduce this rather annoying sound by boxing in the offending components, but that's a video for another time. If any of you know an elegant solution for it, even if it requires soldering on some extra components, please let me know in the comments below. So I hope you found this experiment interesting. It's been a real eye-opener for me to see such a power-hungry card cooled so effectively. And I'd love to see manufacturers start to move this way because one of the most power-hungry components in a computer is actually the graphics card. So it would be great to see some sort of method to allow big coolers to be fixed onto them like this. And I think it's a niche market, but I think the market is there. So you know, get your skates on and do something. <laughs> now, um, what it could be, as simple as having a mini ITX case with a chamber above where the graphics card goes, um, and that chamber could allow just um, a big cooler to be mounted to the graphics card, just like this, and the air can move from the front or back of the case uh, to the other side. And that airflow path is much more effective uh, at removing the heat because it can flow more freely rather than the air just being blown down onto the card and being forced out of the sides, which isn't very effective um, and can be quite noisy as you heard earlier. So I'd love to see manufacturers start to adopt something like this and uh, you never know, um, perhaps this video might raise awareness of the possibility. Let's hope so. Anyway, another thing I'd like manufacturers to start doing is somehow cutting down on the coil whine on graphics cards, because once they do decrease in noise levels, if something like this is adopted, then that becomes the limiting factor, and it can be very, very loud and annoying. So I, I really hope that they can find some solution to uh, minimise that, because it's, it's quite distracting. Um, but other than that, I think this has been very, uh, a very successful experiment and I'm going to be building an, another computer case with something like this 
included. And I'm going to be using this latest ITX motherboard from ASUS, which has been very kindly provided by Rykelt. So thanks very much, guys. And uh, you can find a link to them, actually, in the description if you are still doing some Christmas shopping. And uh, I'm also going to be using a GTX 1080, which has been provided by Zotac. And uh, I'm still gathering the components for this build, so if you're a retailer or a manufacturer and want to support it, then please do get in touch. For the meantime, if you'd like to see how the cloud unit case was built, you can click that by uh, following the card up here. And um, that's quite an interesting video because it's, it goes through basic metalwork, um, but in a home environment. So. Uh, it's not amazing, but it does go to show what you can actually do at home. And perhaps it will give you a few, a bit of encouragement if you'd like to try something like that yourself, because it's, it's totally possible to do it at home. Um, but other than that, um, you've been watching DIY Perks, and I hope I catch you next time. Goodbye for now.